Hey guys and welcome to today's video. Don't mind my voice, it sounds a little bit weird. I'm getting a little bit sick, I think. Um, so in this video I'm going to be t talking you guys through how I managed to get an ATAR of 92.5. Hello Nate, do you want to say hi? Mate got a haircut, he looks a bit like a rat. Since year 9 I've been watching ATAR review videos and how to get like a high ATAR because it was always a massive goal of mine even though I most likely wasn't going to use it because I don't really want to go to uni. I wanted to finish off school on like a high note and be really proud of what I've achieved and there is no way on earth that I was expecting to get 92. Somehow it happened and I'm just so proud and happy about it. And so I wanted to share a few tips with you guys on how I managed to get that. Um, and I firstly just want to say the subjects that I did because I always thought to get a high ATAR you needed to do like spec math, math methods, physics, chemistry, biology, all of them like very complex subjects. And I did nutrition, geography, general English, normal maths and biology. And I had to do religion because that's part of what we do at our school and research project. Just going to get straight into this video and we're going to start off with something that you can do really early on at school. I know this might not apply for everyone if you're just going into year 12 now. I'm told that I should do year 11 English in year 10 and then year 12 English in year 11. I did this because it gave me the option to have an extra subject just in case in year 12 I'm really struggling with something and I'm not doing well. I have another grade to fall back on that can be used. And I also did year 12 biology in year 11 as well. And they're not necessarily the hardest subjects, but I just gave myself more options. So I wasn't as stressed like, oh my God, I've got four subjects in year 12 and I need to get every A's in every single subject. If that's something you can do and you think you could manage, try and do a year 12 subject in year 11 or lower because it is just great to have something to fall back onto. Another thing that I did that really helped me a lot was doing a vet course. Um, I don't know if every school offers these but it is something that you can ask your teachers about. Like it's just good to look into. I did um, my certificate four in fitness in year 12. So that pretty much replaced a subject and I just had to pass it pretty much which, which I did in like two months. I got extra freeze throughout the whole entire year because that obviously took away a subject so that's a whole other line of freeze and because I finished it so early I just had so much extra time to do work. When it comes to your ATAR they use your three best subjects plus your vet course which averages out your top three best subjects if that makes sense. So say if you got an A minus, an A plus and an A your vet course would average out to an A um, and use that to boost your ATAR. My next piece of advice is to pick subjects in year 12 they actually going to enjoy the assignments and you're gonna wanna do well in it. I was thinking of doing PE and then when I sat down in the little course introduction thing, we were talking about the assignments and they were all boring like analyze your softball technique and stuff like that. Some people love that but I hate that stuff. And I was like, no, I'm not doing this. I'd rather do my cert for in fitness and do a subject that I actually find interesting. That's just something you've got to consider because it's going to be really hard to do well in a subject that you hate or that you just find super boring. Now, my next bit of advice is to organize your freeze. So most likely in year 12, you're going to get free lessons, which is where you can just study um, independently in an area of your choice. I had about 13 frees in a week like 13 modules and they were all 45 minutes long so that was very handy so in the morning freeze I would often just get to school at that time I wouldn't come to school late because like if I'm, I may as well just do some work and just get ahead so just try and motivate yourself to just use them freeze you've got that spare time and get ahead like it is the best thing you can do is to be ahead and on top of everything but there were some frees which I just let myself talk or do whatever. But try and organize it so you have a balance of freeze to do work, freeze to socialize, and like freeze to relax. Because there were some days where I was having like a bad day and I literally just used the whole 45 minutes to be on my phone. The next piece of advice is to buy revision guides. So I didn't really understand how valuable this tip would have been until the end of the year when it came around to exams. So you often get given the choice to purchase the exam revision guide booklets and I did it but I never opened it. I was going through it at the end of the year 
and every single question that we've had on a test has came from this thick book full of exam questions. I was like, if I just read this book, oh, I would have, I would have been so much less stressed. So honestly, just do practice questions. Do so many practice questions. It will get you ready for exams and tests. And honestly, it's just the best form of revision that I've ever found. Instead of making cue cards or rewriting notes, just do heaps of tests. Like at the end of the day, that's what most of your assignments are going to be. You may as well get practice at that and get confident with it and then the rest will be a breeze. Don't be afraid to ask your teachers for help or go to meetings to talk about things. So my maths teacher was really great with this. If there was ever something I was unsure of or wanted to get extra help with, she would say we can meet up at recess or whatever. Like sometimes it's really beneficial to get some one-on-one -on -one help. Even if it's something so small and just a simple question, like you're better off going into an assignment or a test with that extra bit of confidence. So the next thing that I want to say is to not stress yourself out so much over the year. Like yes, I understand for lots of people getting good a getting a good ATAR is like a serious big goal that they have, but you've got to enjoy the year because year 12 is probably one of the most funnest years you're going to have at school because there's formal, there's graduation, there's your last sports day. You need to just breathe and take it as it comes and just enjoy as much time as you can there because it's going to be over so soon and at the end of the day your ATAR is not everything. I know you hear it a lot but there's always other ways into your courses and that you can definitely be successful without an ATAR. Like I believe that if you really want to do it you can. Like I am not the typical academic student you could say like I struggled a lot with chemistry, physics, math methods like I managed to put this motivation that I had to do well into subjects that I enjoyed that I could do well in rather than just doing subjects because they might get scaled well. Um, now a little bit of advice on homework. In all honesty I did barely any homework mainly because I had so many frees and not everyone is going to get the luxury of 13 45 minute frees. That's why that advice about freeze is so important. You need to use them as much as you can to get ahead so you have less homework and then you can enjoy your time at home more. But if you are doing homework, just please do it in a quiet space secluded from everyone else. Don't try and mix watching TV with homework. Don't have stuff going in the background. Just sit in your room, sit outside, sit somewhere, put in headphones or whatever and just do it. Just get it done. If you can, try and just get ahead of things. Like, I know there are going to be times where you're super motivated and then literally can't be bothered doing anything and just want to do BuzzFeed quizzes. And, like, there were times where I joined in and I just didn't do any work. But then there were days where I was like, no Paris. You're going to do half an hour of solid work, get this stupid essay out of the way, write as many paragraphs as you can, and then you can do whatever you want. And you need to give yourself them little goals and them little targets so you can be ahead. Because being ahead, honestly, is the best thing. Like hand your drafts in early, get ahead, don't waste time, and if you do want to do, if you do want to procrastinate one day, at least give yourself half an hour to do solid work and then go and do whatever you want to do. Okay, so I've got two more bits of advice left. My next one is to just not waste your time with negative people. This year was a massive change for me, friendship-wise, and my focus of the year was to have a good time, but do well. And there's no point being around people who are going to put you down, negatively distract you. You've just got to focus on yourself. Like you can't waste time with negative people. Just hang around people who you can have a good time with, who you can have a good chat with. Um, maybe go see some friends on a weekend or something or after school one night. But yeah, I didn't want to go out to parties. I didn't want to drink. I didn't want to do any of that. I know you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with the ATAR? But if you're surrounded by people who make you feel bad, who stress you out every day, who you get picked on, who you get judged by, or if they're just like peer pressuring you to come out to parties and drink and do things you don't want to do, it is going to affect your grades because you're going to be distracted. You're going to be at home feeling guilty or bad, whereas you'd rather have friends who would support you and encourage you to do the right thing. My last bit of advice is for exams. Um, I did make heaps of exam prep and revision videos and all of that, so I'm going to have all of my sort of year 12 advice videos in the description if you guys want to see some more specific things but um with exams i know it's easier said than done but don't stress hopefully at your school you guys are allowed to do practice exams on your like education website for your state check um practice exams and all of the exams 
from other years. So for math, we had every single exam that was given to students from 2017. I did five practice exams for maths. And so I went into the new one feeling super confident because you understand the sort of questions you're gonna get, how they're gonna be formatted, and then them trick questions, like what sort of things might they ask you. So please do yourself a favor and check out them previous exams. From there. When it comes to exam day, go in with a fresh start, don't have any distractions or any worries going around you in the morning. Don't do anything too ridiculous. Just wake up, take your time, have a good breakfast, breathe, relax, and just go in with confidence and don't overthink things. But yeah, I'd say exam mornings aren't the morning to go rush around and do things. I know sometimes stuff might happen, but just try and take it as chill and calm as you can. So yeah, that is just like a general range of advice of things that I implemented into year 12 to get an ATAR above 90. If you guys have any more questions, just leave a comment and I'll definitely get back to you. But if there is quite a lot more, I'd be more than happy to make a video with more specific things. But I'm just happy to help in whatever way I can because I would like to help at least one person get a little bit of advice to achieving their goals for year 12. Because honestly, it is the nicest feeling. Um, if you guys haven't seen my ATAR reaction, I'll link that below along with all other year 12 advice videos that I've got throughout the year. Um, but yeah, I honestly never thought I'd be making this video. Like, it's always been a goal of mine to be able to get a 90 ATAR and then give advice on it. But now, now I get to do it. 